Wife. What did we read yesterday and where are we today? Well, yesterday we read Ezekiel chapter 41. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And in that chapter, it was Ezekiel dictating his vision from God about the plans for the new temple that has yet to come to pass. Yeah, where where is that temple? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. No, I don't. I don't think anyone knows. So it, it never got built. Never, it? it never got builded. Yeah, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> so there's uh, that. That's pretty much it. That was that yeah. was all that happened. That uh, is literally all that happened. I I don't have anything else to add here. That was some really... Leviticus style measurements. Yeah, yeah. So that was a uh, Ezekiel chapter forty one. Sure as fuck was. And in today's episode, we're going over. Ezekiel chapter 42. All right, let's do this. Okie dokie. All right, we are hopping into Ezekiel chapter 42, okay. or as I like to call it, <laughs> Easy Kyle. There you go. Chapter 42. Which I'd like to point out is mm -hmm. the 42nd chapter. I know. Which is, you know, in, in, in our world, that the 42 has a significance, and that, that's the... The meaning of life, the universe, and uh, and everything. It's the answer to the question. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, for mm -hmm. Douglas Adams. You know, of in case for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yada, yada, Not yada. the movie. I just I the book. I, I've let it slide in other um, books that we've been in, mm -hmm. and I always regret it. I'm like, I should mention that 42. It's 42. Yeah, right. Like yeah. you gotta. You gotta. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. So this is a continuation still mm. of the prophet's vision of the temple. Can I can I just mention how extremely excited I am to get more measurements on the fucking temple? I bet I know how excited you aren't. <laughs> <laughs> so um I just say that because once again we're starting like mid paragraph yeah, here. yeah then <laughs> right right into it yep mm -hmm. the man you know the man the man the, the, gold the golden man. man yeah either god or the angel or whatever the, the fuck Lord. he is just a angel crazy dude. fucking drug riddled dream that ezekiel's having here yeah goldilocks right goldie man yeah uh then the man led me northward into the outer court and brought me to the rooms opposite the temple courtyard and opposite the outer wall on the north side. Mm, that's exciting. I hope there's something fun there. North and south and south and north. Who really cares? La, la, la. <laughs> the building whose door faced north was 100 cubits long and 50 cubits wide, both in the section 20 cubits from the inner court and in the section opposite the pavement of the outer court, mm. gallery, faced gallery at the three levels see i was really hoping for a statue of like a lion mixed with a turtle or mm, something mm. something exciting you know but no just just nope. cubits and measurements it's cubits all the way down <laughs> <laughs> in front of the rooms was an inner passageway 10 cubits wide and 100 cubits long their doors were on the north now the upper rooms were narrower for the galleries took more space from them than from the rooms on the lower and middle floors of the building. Do you think that he consulted with an architect as he was having this vision? Absolutely not. No? No. Just This is just his, like, I mean, this, this had to be, this is so detailed, right? Yeah. I'm just trying to imagine what the writing process was for this, because you know it was not God holding the pen for him, writing the fucking, like, he's saying he had a vision. So at some point. Mm -hmm. He had to come back and write this, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm just, I'm trying to imagine how you, like, I, I can't remember shit from one moment to the next. And this guy's writing down the exact measurements of a goddamn, you know, temple. Look, when I just exited a store and the receipt is in my hand and you ask me how much I just spent, I have no fucking clue. Right. I cannot hold a number in my head to save my goddamn life. Maybe he had photographic memory. I don't know. I don't want to judge. But, right. I mean, it just seems a little unrealistic i feel like mm. he was doing this while he was like he was writing this he's like well that would be about this long yeah you know that's what he's sitting there like doing. he's drawing it out in the sand yeah yeah he probably sketched it out on his little uh whatever something i started to say ipad <laughs> <laughs> his tablet if you will yeah right <laughs> Um, I think that he was like, so the Egyptians made these really cool things called pyramids, mm. and I'm going to build mine upside fucking down. Yeah. What's up? Yeah. There yeah. You go. The rooms on the top floor had no pillars, as the courts had, so they were smaller in floor space than those on the lower and middle floors. Mm. 
There was an outer wall parallel to the rooms and the outer court. It extended in front of the rooms for 50 cubits. Okay. Make sure you know that. Yeah. Just this is going to be a test later. I mean, <laughs> it, if... It, okay, I always do a pop quiz at the end yeah. of every book. Right. But any question that says, how long was such and such, I'm automatically, nope. No, they, I mean, this is irrelevant to pretty much anything ever. It's bullshittery nonsense. It, you know what this is relevant to? It's relevant to proving that this fucking prophecy is absolutely incorrect. Yeah. It's relevant because this shit hasn't happened. Yeah. In 2,000 years, nobody has built this bitch. It seems really ridiculous to put something so specific in the Bible as the word of God and something that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Right? And yes, I understand that this could still happen. And you know what? Given the fanaticism of religion, I'm sure somebody will make it happen. Right. Probably. Right. I, who knows? But that being, it just, it just, this is so dumb. It is so dumb. That's, that's all. And it's boring and I'm sorry for it, but we're going to be able to say we read it all. Yeah. No, I, I'm just speaking for the Bible itself. I feel kind of embarrassed for the Bible here. I'm like, <laughs> you have second degree embarrassment. Yeah. Secondhand cringe. It's it's not, this is not good. This is yeah. not good. It's, it's not a good look for them. That's all. It's not. So. It's not. Y'all, I'm so embarrassed for you. <laughs> Your cute little book. Aw. <laughs> Yeah. Womp womp. Right. <laughs> While the row of rooms on the side next to the outer court was 50 cubits long, you know, yeah. as it is. Right. The row on the side nearest the sanctuary was 100 cubits long. Okay. Just so you know. Yeah. Okay. I got it. The lower rooms had an entrance on the east side as one enters them from the outer court. You know how it be. Yeah. Sure. On the south side along the length of the wall of the outer court adjoining the temple courtyard and opposite the outer wall were rooms with a passageway in front of them. Not rooms with passageways in front of them. Holy shit. Um, we have rooms in our house. We have and even, there is even passageways a passageway in front of, them. In front of it's it. It's amazing. This yeah. is it's probably God ordained. I know, right? You know? We have a house and there's a hallway. <laughs> 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 These were like the rooms on the north. They have the same length and width with similar exits and dimensions. You know how you exit a room? Mm -hmm. Through the fucking window. That's how. <laughs> <laughs> similar to the doorways on the north were the doorways of the rooms on the south. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. So let me get this straight. The front looked like the back. Right, right. And, and also the sides. But he's not going to go over the exact dimensions or he's just saying they're similar? Like, he said, gonna... he's like, remember how I told you the measurements on the north? The South is just fucking like it. And I'm not going to repeat myself because okay. I already wrote that shit right. down. Just, you can just go back and read it. Put the same shit over there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's why he, he gave the instructions already once. Got it. But Got it. he's letting you know, I didn't forget about the South. It's just that it's the same as the North. I feel like this wouldn't fly for a zoning board. I mean, probably you know, not saying, like, because they, they probably nix this right off the bat. Like, wait, you didn't even, you didn't even draw the blueprints for the other side. You're just gonna, you're just saying it's the same as over here. The same. That that doesn't work. No, you need you need the actual blueprints, man. It is Come the on, same. If, if you're given the blueprints, just give us the fucking blueprints. Well, that's all. I, I it wouldn't pass it, for a number of reasons, but I think that the south is the same as the north is the least of your concerns with today's zoning boards because right, right. like there's no electric work there's no plumbing yeah 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 right i know i know but I, minor details i i really do believe that we should replace these chapters with just a fucking blueprint of whatever this fucking thing is it's true we you know? should we should write the bible and be like hey bible dear just, bible just put a fucking picture here would you yeah cuz this is this is stupid it's a waste of time it is and it's you know? boring Ugh. right with that way, we can get to Ezekiel chapter 40, we can be like, uh, or no, 41, and you can be like, uh, C, C figure 1 dash E for Ezekiel. <laughs> so <laughs> You're dumb. <laughs> there was a doorway at the beginning of the passageway that was parallel to the corresponding wall extending eastward by which one enters the rooms. Uh -huh. Then yeah. he, the, yeah, the, the, the dude, golden guy, the, the, golden god, guy. the god, the angel, the whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He said to me, the north and south rooms facing the temple courtyard are the priest's rooms where the priests who approach the Lord will eat the most holy offerings. <laughs> there they will put the most holy offerings, the grain offerings, the sin offerings, and the guilt offerings, for the place is holy. Once the priests enter the holy precincts, they are not to go into the outer court until they leave behind. 
the garments in which they minister, for these are holy. They are to put on other clothes before they go near the places that are for the people. Because when you have holes in your clothes, <laughs> you have to put patches on them. Okay? I, and so they have special holy eating the gifts that people gave them for clothes mm-hmm. that they can't wear anywhere else? Right. That's really weird. Totally tracks. It's really fucking weird. Um, Like... When you go into somebody's house and they're like, we don't wear shoes in the house, you have to take Yeah, no, I, I mean, I don't like that personally. Like, I, but I'm, I respect it and, and it, I don't find that anywhere near as weird as having special fucking eating clothes mm. for priests. See, you sometimes have holes in your socks is why you don't like it. Right. But here's the thing, like, it makes total sense and I really appreciate it because you know that when you're walking around in somebody's house that, you know, you can walk barefoot and not be walking where the bottom of other people's shoes already were. Because the bottom of your shoes touches dirt and dog pee and sure, all sure. kinds of grodiness. Well, and I will say this. Like, usually when you walk into a house that has that stipulation, usually it is a very well-kept house, too. Yes. Not, not to say that ours is, like, awful. No, but... but- um, you wear your shoes in the house. I like the second I hit the door, I take mine off, but not for like cleanliness reasons. I just I have to have my feet got to be free. OK, sure. nobody puts baby in a corner and my feet got to be free. Yeah, yeah. And then like I'll walk around in socks just because I don't want to be totally barefoot since you wear your shoes in the house. Yeah. But oh, my God, when I get to bed, mm-hmm. the socks come off. Yeah. Of course, I can't be trapped. Course. Right. Don't trap me. Right. Okay. When he had finished measuring what was inside the temple area, he being the, God, the golden, golden guy, dude. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. He led me out by the east gate and measured the area all around. He measured the east side with the measuring rod. It was five hundred cubits. He measured the north side. It was five hundred cubits by the measuring rod. Can you? Can you just? I, I'm trying to imagine a god. Spending time building right. a fucking building. And giving you the math for it. <laughs> right, right. Like, yeah, this is, I mean, uh, what, you know what would be even, really. Even an angel, even if this is an angel, I'm yeah. like, what? You know what would be really impressive, my guy? If you gave us instructions on how to build a rocket ship so that we could, like, go to Mars or what the fuck ever. Sure. sure. That, that would have been, like, super impressive. Right. I, and, like, passed down through the ages, and we'd be like, the fuck is this? And Leonardo da Vinci's like, it looks like it might be a flying machine, but I'm not quite there yet. Because, right, you know, right. he was advanced for his time, but not, not like, rocket yeah, ship. Right, but, sure. like, almost got it, right? Yeah. And then, like, our scientists take a look at it, and like I don't know, maybe by Einstein time period, sure, sure. they look at it and they're like, "Oh my God, we've solved the See? fucking math." Now that would be impressive, right? That would be impressive. That would have been you, cool. what. What other thing would be impressive if you wanted to stick with these people in that time? Mm-hmm. Is just you know fucking making this temple up here. Yeah, you know that would be yeah. impressive. Like, but not not talking looked, to some dude who's already questionable with regard to his sanity. I looked over the hill and the building was there and I went back to my people and I told them and they didn't believe me, but I led them and over the hill we went and they followed and lo, there was the building that I right, told them. Right. I'd be like, all right. Yeah. Okay. I don't believe you. Right. But, but I mean, that's, that's, more that's, that's definitely... You know, that's worthy of a, a mention, that's, you know? Yeah, so that's if, it, magic if it truly right there. happened, then that's definitely a miracle. Sure. You know? That's some magic. Right. That That's cute. Just, I'm just asking for some sort of verifiable proof that you are actually God, you know? Like, you're talking through these people who, who are wholly unreliable. I mean, they're still, they're still carving in rocks and writing on fucking scrolls, for fuck's sake. Yeah, yeah. You know? Right. Come on. You could have just eaten some bad food, man. And then, you know, that could have caused this, you know, whatever. Whole hallucination of yeah, a gold sure. man with a ruler. Right. Like, that is going to be my company logo someday, a gold man with a ruler. Yeah. Maybe you just liked your food a little more on the rare side, and you ended up with, like, a lot of, you know, poison dreams, you know? My dad's allergic to penicillin. There you go. See? But I think he would die, not, like, hallucinate. <laughs> So that was a bad example. Yeah, yeah, um, right. I don't. I suppose it would depend on how much he took too. Probably. I have no idea. I, but. from what I understand, like even the littlest bit would like. Really. <coughs> hmm. Interesting. Um. Have you ever hallucinated? 
Mm, I mean, I have taken drugs where I hallucinated. So, Whoa, yes. what did you hallucinate? I mean, it was mostly just you know melty shit. Melty shit. Yeah, I mean, well, like, okay, I've taken multiple drugs that were that were like uh, caused hallucinations. They were different types of hallucinations. This is in your younger, in my pre younger, me. younger pre you years. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I took, just I don't want listeners to think that that's like our no, lifestyle no, 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 no. now. Not that we're judging. If I, that is your lifestyle, but I've taken shrooms, I've taken uh, acid, I've taken what? ecstasy, and they all have different visuals that you experience. And I would say probably the most uh, v- vibrant one would have been um, mushroom, or would, have, would have been the shrooms, um, and that was just it was more about like I, I don't I don't really know how to describe it because it's not really like. Visions, it is, it are visuals, but it, it, it's it's colors, it's it's sounds, it's how everything kind of comes together. It's not so much about like some people say they see things. I've never been on a drug where I've seen things that weren't there that I can remember. And it's more about like a twisting of what is there, like so, dolly clock kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I well, when I was on acid, I was remember we were walking through town at the time, and I remember looking up at some cloud or some smokestack smoke. And it looked very, um, uh, what, um, shit, Starry Night. It looked mm. like it looked like Starry Night. So yeah. Okay. And so that was you know interesting. Wow. But and then like ecstasy was just mostly just like a little bit of a vibration in the in the world sort of. So. Wow, I feel so. Um, I don't know what's the word inexperienced because <laughs> I never did any of that stuff. I kind of feel robbed in a way. Like I. I always wanted to go to a rave just to be able to, like, have experienced it one time. And now I'm, like, way too old. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh, man, I missed that boat. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't know that I would really. There, There is. I mean, I, I don't know. I, there's. I, I don't miss a lot of that. It was just it was just fun at the time though for sure. Well, that's what I mean. Like I'm so. not saying I want to like live that. I'm too lazy for that lifestyle. Right, and I and I don't recommend it necessarily. But there are some benefits. So like there's microdosing now of LSD and stuff like that that helps or or shrooms or whatever it is that mm-hmm. helps with su- certain mental um, things. And, mental illnesses, yeah. epilepsy, all so, kinds of. I mean, multiple sclerosis. I, I, I don't. Read, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't want to speak to that because I don't really know. I was looking but. up drug things today. I was having a weird conversation with my dad. Yeah. And um. Oh, because we were talking about um bath salts. Mm-hmm. And um, he was like, you know, it's not really bath salt, right? And my mom was like, what? Like she had no idea what we were talking about. Yeah. And so we had to like explain everything. And then I was like, but what kind of drug is that again now? And none of us could remember. And so then, you asked me. And then we were like, <laughs> what's the one where when you shoot somebody, but they're raging so they don't feel the bullets and they keep coming? And then I was like, oh, that's PCP, I think. Right. And yeah. then so, yeah, we were like trying to like, what's this drug? What's that drug? Like, it was so weird because my parents are like so n- they're even less knowledgeable about drugs than but i am to be, to be fair bath salts are not pcp it's right completely different no things, so. no i know i'm saying we were like what's this what's this what's right, this right right and um yeah so it was just very strange to have been having that conversation but i was looking things up and one of the things that i saw i can't remember which one it was right but because i was looking up so many yeah yeah um one of the things that i saw was Yes, um, multiple multiple sclerosis can be um, aided with one of these kinds of drugs. Got it. Got it. There's so many. Yeah. Who could know? Who could know? Coffee. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what else? I don't yeah. know shit. Yeah. I don't know shit about shit. Take care of you guys. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I don't know this, how this we, was not any endorsement for drugs is always getting out earlier. So. No, because like the most Just, I've done is like a few edibles. <laughs> Like right, weed, right. Yeah. that's it. So yeah. I, I'm. It's also not a condemnation if you do. Right, so. that, that's what I was saying. Like I'm not saying like that that lifestyle is not for us. It's just not where we're currently at. Yeah. So yeah, uh, you do you. Take care of you. Be your best self. Enjoy your life. Be smart. Yeah. yeah. That's all. Make good choices. Right. Guys, that's what mom says. <laughs> have fun. Make smart choices. Be safe. Have an exit plan. Always have an exit plan. Yes, yes. All right. He measured the south side. I know. I no, had to okay, get back yeah. to this right, bullshit. Right. Sorry. Mm-hmm. 
guess how many um, cubits it was. Was it like 100? It was 500 Five, by the measuring shit, rod. Shit. I, I was, yeah. Then he turned to the west side and measured. Guess how many cubits that it was. 500? 500 by Five, the measuring rod. Okay. Yeah, yeah, rod. So he measured the area on all four sides. It had a wall around it, guys. No way. Not it a did. wall. It did. Yeah. Um, 500 cubits long and 500 cubits wide to separate the holy from the common. The end. It's kind of like Mexico. <gasps> what? <laughs> Build a wall around That's the... what Trump wants to do, right? Build a wall? Yeah, yeah. And they had a wall, so they were like, you're not holy. Get out right, of here. Right. They're you're... separating the holy from the unholy, right? Yeah. You're so gross. Yeah. You don't have holes in you. Go away. So that's, that's probably why the, the Christian right likes the, the wall idea. Yeah, because you know? because they read scripture and they take every scripture <laughs> seriously. I'm sorry. I'm I'm being a little snarky because that was some every time we see my parents and we just saw them today. Yes. Which was very it was very nice, I it will was, say. It was, it was very nice. Um we had a nice dinner with them and very interesting, weird, fun conversations. Yeah. But one of the things that they always end up saying is you know, we read scripture and we take the scripture like we do everything, like we interpret it literally. And in my head, I'm like, no, you don't. Like, right. You don't even I'm, know all the scripture. I'm like, I'm I'm reading it. Yeah. I, I know that you don't. Right. And you might have some specific verses memorized sure. that fit your narrative. But no, you don't. And I, and I guarantee that if we were to confront them about something, that mm-hmm. they would immediately go Google search it, mm-hmm. and then um, run, it, run it by somebody to verify how they're supposed to think about it. Yeah. You know? How do we respond but to this? they don't actually know all the stuff that's in there. No. Because if they did, they'd, they'd know a lot more about what's in there. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because if they did, they did. Right. And they don't. So clearly they don't. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. It's just always interesting. Every time they say that, I'm like, but you don't, though. Moreover, I think I, th- I think with your parents, one of the things that um, I have noticed through the years is that they they pick their churches or their pastors or whatever the fuck they're they're following. Which I think at this point it's online shit. It, yeah, it's but, a online YouTube guy, right? But they they pick them based on the viewpoints that they want to adhere to. Mm-hmm. It has nothing to do with what they've read and understood about the Bible. It has to do with the the points that they understand are biblical. And how they want to react to those within whatever group they are a part of. Right. Right. It, yeah. it doesn't, it's not based on their own knowledge of the Bible. It's based on what they have understood about the Bible and then interpret that to be how they want their pastor and or church to act. Right. Right. Because you could just as easily go to a forward thinking church and they would say, no, we, we go by the scripture as right. well. Yeah. But exactly. like what I always want to say is you go by the scripture as you read it. That yeah. is not the same thing as no 100 percent literal and yeah. i'm like but it's not though well I, I, it can't be yeah and, and I, I recently had somebody tell me that like all of christianity essentially believes in the same basic doctrine right and i'm like okay you're if we're going with like the jesus died for your sins thing sure but you get much further beyond that and it gets a little hairy it does like, you, you have a lot of of differences between each of these denominations Mm -hmm. and they you can you can pass them off as small but when it comes to like one doesn't let women you know pass in leadership yeah and then the the other one does that's a pretty fucking significant difference or one condemns um the lgbtq whereas the other one's like Man, you love Christ. Get your ass in here. We love you, too. Right. Now, I'm, I'm quite certain that the person I was talking to probably would say that those aren't real Christians over there. That's only the ones that adhere to these. You know, like, they but start again, they start winnowing away right. these other groups as, well, they're not real Christians. And every Christian says that about other Christians, which makes yeah. it impossible to know what, which Christian is right. Yeah, you can never have a conversation about the differences because the differences don't apply to their worldview. Their worldview only sees the people that are part exactly. of their viewpoint. Exactly. And, and actually, we just kind of talked a little bit about this on our last Patreon episode mm-hmm. with regard to how they are part of this closed circle and only accept people within their own circle. Which makes it a so. kind of incestuous, small pool that feeds itself. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it definitely is. So, 
Uh, I don't think, do we have anything else to cover today, or was that going to be it? That was going to be it, because, be it. Well, um... I'm tired as fuck right now. Well, it's done, it's and it was boring, and, yeah, it is late. We had a really big dinner, and... and a long day. And a long day, and we had to be around Christians today. <laughs> Ones that we love. Ones that we love, but Christians nonetheless. So yes. we got to recharge and like, oh, breathe. The, you know what? I, I have to be fair. They don't really throw it in our face. Not anymore. No, there we have the prayer before we eat, mm -hmm. which we we participate in the holding of the hands around table. But that's when it. we say grace. Yeah, yeah. And and they don't expect us to say amen or anything. So I mean, there's that, and they usually only bring up their their religion. One, maybe two times throughout the rest of the evening. Mm -hmm. And for being there for like five or six hours today, that's not bad. No, you know? and we really got into some really cool conversations about history. You yeah, know? yeah, no, it was Which fun. Which was really just very strange and interesting. You know what? I'm, oh, I'm sorry. This is so off topic. But because I've said things, you know, about my parents and how much I hate their religion shit. Sure. I got to just... Put a plug out there. My dad gave me the most heartfelt, sincere, sweet apology. Yeah. For um, just things that um, happened in life, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, when I was a teenager, and it wasn't even anything he did that he should have to apologize for. It was just um, the way his military career, um, he had to retire and we had to move my la before my last two years of high school. Yeah, he and he felt guilty about how things went down. Yeah, he so. felt guilty and because our family suffered a lot um, from the sudden move from the small place that we were to the big crappy United States where <laughs> like all we were just thrown in. Like we'd been overseas so long that it was just like everything was bad yeah yeah and um especially you know i only had two years left of high school and it was just it was just the worst time for our family we yeah. fell apart there's a lot of upheaval for yeah. you guys and yeah and it once we hit the states it was kind of like every man for himself and so they were not as communicative and supportive as they could have been because they were trying to survive and now as you know a almost 49 year old adult i get that totally get right, that right right so, like, that's nothing I would ever have held against him. But it was him. nice of him to offer. It was. It made me cry. It was so <laughs> sweet. And just, like, I appreciated that he was concerned and that it was weighing on him and that he he felt like he owed that to me. Yeah. And I really appreciated it. So, right. um, I'm I'm saying that because I need to, to even the odds, like, uh, put some karma out there, you know, because... Sure. Like, it's just a good reminder that people are more than one thing. I do want to mention this, too. We, we watched uh, the movie Willow tonight. We did. With your parents. Right? Willow. And I think a discussion came up at one point where we were talking about um, gods, like the gods of old. That was and a weird. It was a weird discussion. Yes. Because your parents essentially agreed that these. Oh, we were talking about how it's. Uh, why, why can't this god just make these things happen? Right. Yeah. Well, or why can't this magical thing just make these things happen, right? Yeah. Oh no, it was it was um when the little people take Willow and um his friend into the cave and then the magical Glinda like being yes. is like, "Oh, let them go and stop pestering them and Willow, you have to go to whatever Ravina or whatever the old lady right, is." Right, 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 right. And we were all like, "Hang on, you know what? Why you're magic? Why don't you fight B bad, the lady, bad guy, the yeah. bad guy, right, yeah. And okay, if you're not gonna fight her yourself, at least can you like magic them there? Right. And then my dad commented like, "Yeah, you're like a god or whatever. Can't you just make that?" And <laughs> I was like, my eyes were huge. I could not look at you, husband, because <laughs> I knew you already knew what I was thinking. I knew you were thinking because how many times have we said, "You're God. Why right, can't you yeah. just dot yeah, dot oh, dot?" No, it's, it's a huge part of our question yeah. with regard to god right yeah. so yeah so we just like silence like i'm just watching the movie over right here. yeah you, you don't know it but you just touched on a really really interesting like, topic to us like so. i don't know dad why yeah why right. can't god a little self-examination there huh. with your uh with regard to your own god yeah that'd be interesting right yes yeah but i, I don't think that self-reflection when it comes to the God of the Bible is something that a lot of uh, heavily 
indoctrinated Christians do. So no, unfortunately, I don't, I don't think, I don't think that's a discussion that we would even be able to no, entertain. No, but yeah. I, I had a great evening with my parents. Yes, yes. And I am and glad that I, that is something. We had steak. We had steak. Oh, it was great. It was really good. Yeah. Uh, so there's that. I'm glad that we can have that relationship with them in spite of all of our many, many differences. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I appreciate it. Definitely. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, we are going to get out of here. That was Ezekiel chapter 42. Sure as fuck was. Which means that we will be back tomorrow with... Ezekiel chapter 43. So long and thanks for all the fish. Bye. Don't forget your towel. <laughs>